Welcome Gibbscam users. Today we're going to show you how to use the sync control. Now the sync control is only needed, it's right up here. It's only needed if you have multiple turrets or multiple flows. In this case here, if I bring this up, you'll see I have an upper turret. It's a B-axis, rotates, and a lower turret, standard 12 station turret. And I have a main spindle and a sub spindle. I turn this off here to show you the part. Here is the part, of course, as you can see. And what I need to do, this is about eight inches long, and what I need to do is I'm going to bring in my chuck here. And I want to start out with a stock uh, sticking out approximately four inches from the chuck here, because uh, this is an eight inch long part and we couldn't stick out eight inches in here and machine it without it vibrating. So I have a four inches out here and we're going to do all this machining here except for the grooves. And then we're going to take the sub spindle, bring this out here, and pull it an additional four inches. And then of course our stock will clear, uh, still be clear back in here. So we'll hold it with the sub spindle here on the end here. And then we'll finish the rest of this including the grooves here and the hole and engraving. Last thing we'll do is part it off. So we want to show you how to sync this up. Now this part here, I haven't done any syncing. As you can see here, this is just the, the sinks and there is none here. As you can see there's lots of errors on this part. So if we go to run this, I have my tool list here of course. Four tools in the upper head and four tools in the lower head including the part off tool. So if I go to program this, I you, normally when I program MTM I program it um, without worrying about any sinks or anything. I program it just like I would a normal lathe. So in this case here. So the first thing we're going to do is of course uh, we're going to pinch turn this. We're going to take a face pass first and then we're going to pinch turn it with the upper head, upper turret, and lower turret at the same time. And then we'll do some milling on the end and then we're going to come in with the sub spindle. So here's a sub spindle in and we're going to grab it on about a half an inch right here. And then we're going to do a, here we go, a pull. So we, I'm already on approximately a uh, half inch on here. So we're going to pull it approximately five inches here. And that will put this part out at, put this away. So four inches total. So it's going to bring this out here. Let me bring up the geometry. You can see that as well. So this is the second pull. And as you can see, here's the geometry here for the second pull. And of course we'll have material in the main spindle and the, the, the sub spindle will be grabbing onto this part here. If I bring my sub spindle in, you can see it's grabbing onto the part right here. So let's put these away. So I have a number of flows. So once you program the part, you can program it uh, ideally how you would like to do it with the upper turret and lower turret. Try to um, make the time equal between the two if you can. Sometimes you can't, but uh, you try to do the best you can. And here I have my upper flow. So this would be turret number one and bottom flow, turret number two. Now uh, it has a little separation in between here and Gibbs does that automatically. Uh, and all you need to do for that to work is click on sort ops. So it'll automatically sort between flow one and flow two. And then you can move around, move these around where you need to. If, uh, if you need to put in an operation, operation that you forgot to do, you can move these around fairly easily. Now we're not necessarily going to show you how to uh, machine this part. We're going to show you how to sync it. So if I bring up my sync control up here, well, let's first let's uh, render this and you can see the errors that we're getting here. So let's turn on my machine sim here. So this is where we're starting. Let me slow it down. Upper turret, lower turret, sub spindle, main spindle. There's my stock. And of course I have a lot of material back here because we're going to part this off. So if I, play this and we're going to click on the stop sign here and say start stop at part load unload so let's click on play you can see we have both turrets coming in we'll zoom this up and we're pinch turning so we're roughing this out pinch turning and now you can see i'm trying to turn to take maybe another finish pass here and the 
lower turret already has the milling tool in here wanting to cut the hex on the end and as you can see I'm getting lots of errors on here because you can see you can't turn and mill at the same time but at least you can see what it's doing here let's get it uh, finished on the hex now it's taking a finish pass on the hex one more turn there And then the next thing is the subspindle comes forward, grabs onto the part, pulls it. Then we're going to do the second half of this part. So we're going to pinch turn again. All that looks pretty good. But now you notice it's still turning and the lower turret has come in and wanted to drill this hole, this cross hole in here. And we want to take a finish pass on the OD with the upper head. But as you can see, it's trying to part it off already. So that would not work out and we're not finished milling yet either. So then we're going to do the milling, but this would not work very well by holding on this small diameter with the subspindle and it already uh, has parted off the, the uh, part. Then next we're just doing some engraving here. We'll finish that off. So our part is finished, but as you can see, we have lots of alarms here. So if I close this and bring up my sync control, you have a number of ways to sync the tools here, but as you can see, it says there's a spindle control. Make sure you're not trying to mill and turn simultaneously. So if you close this and you click this checkbox here, this looks at the program and tries to find any uh, errors that you have in your program. So quite a few here, or at least uh, five of them here. So let's look at the sync here. And what you can do on the sync control, you don't have to use everything in here, but the most popular one probably is to put syncs in right here, operation sync. And this takes the remove sync on here. This is sync mode operation mode and spindle mode because when you're running multiple flows you can tell which flow you want to control the spindle rpm whether you want the upper turret to control the rpm or the lower turret so you can decide there as well and gibbs will put in the code for that but let's look at the sync here now if i turn off this uniform you can see this shows you the time it takes you can expand these time it takes to do each operation but I kind of prefer because some of these are so short they don't show up there very well unless you expand it even bigger. But then you're scrolling up and down. So usually I like to do uniform view. You can see they're all uniform views. You can, of course, make those bigger as well. So you can see them any way you'd like them. So now we're going to go through and sync this up so we can get rid of the errors. So some syncs are in here already. Uh, and the syncs that are in here already is, is when you tell it to go subspindle forward and pull and back. So Gibbs automatically puts the sync codes in there because it needs to know it knows it needs to do that already. But here's our turning right here. So and this is uh, our pinch turning here. So the first thing I want to do this is flow number two. So this is the lower half here or the lower turret. So the first thing we want to do is, of course, we're going to face this off with the lower turret. Then we want to pinch turn uh, with the upper turret and the lower turret. So you can see here, this is my first operation on the lower flow, which is tool number 10. And then we do then uh, operation number one on the flow one and operation uh, 12. This would be, of course, it's the second operation, but it's in uh, the section 12 here. We want to pinch turn, so I'm going to click on the top part of this. You can see you can click either the bottom or the top, depending on where you want the sync. So I'm going to click on the top here and the top here and click on this button that says sync. You can see now the syncing is, is uh, puts the M code in there. Normally on a FANUC type machine, it's M100, starts at M100 and goes to like M... Uh, well, quite a ways up. Depends on the machine, actually. But you have a lot of... Uh, the sinks you can put in there. But normally I start at M100. So the lower turret is going to face off and then we're pinch turning here. So the next thing I want to do after we pinch turn is mill. So I don't want it to uh, pinch turn and if the lower turret gets done next, start to do milling. So we want to sync that up next. So we want to make sure these end at the same time before the milling comes in. So I'm going to click on the bottom of these and say 
put a sink code there. So we're done turning on here. So now we're going to take the lower turret and we're going to do some milling, which is the hex on the end there. And you can just follow the operations, operation 13. You can follow it down here for the milling. So we get down to the uh, milling and then the subspindle forward and subspindle pull. And then of course we're going to uh, sync uh, the turning again because we're pinch turning again. So I'm going to say sync these two at the end there, which is good. Now next we want to do some turning, but we don't want to do turning and milling at the same time. You can see we still have this error saying we're trying to uh, mill and turn at the same time. So we still want to do some turning. We're still in turning mode, so we might as well stay there. But I don't want the milling to start until the turning is done. So I'm going to say after, after the turning is done, then we do some milling. So I'm going to select those two, click on sync, sync those back up. Okay, we got a few other issues here, which is just fine. So we have some uh, milling to go on again with the flow one and flow two. I want flow number two one to wait until flow number two is done with its drilling so i'm going to sync those up there okay those are done now i have some turning uh, probably the finish turn on the uh, sub spindle when it's grabbing it so i'm going to sync those up as well so i'm going to sync this and the lower one of there wait till those are done before they do their job okay now we're getting closer Again, we're doing some uh, turning here and milling, so I want to make sure that it's done turning before I do any milling. So I'm going to say, don't start the milling until this turning is done. Sync those up. Now it gives me all checks passed. So now we can render and see how we done with the syncing. Turn this off and go to our machine sim. So if we run this, you're going to see an error here. Let's rewind everything. So we're pinched. Let's slow everything down and start over. So face off. Now we're pinched turning. Coming in and milling the hex. Speed that up. Finish. And you can see the upper turret is still waiting. Now the sub spindle is going to come forward, grab onto the part, and we'll single step this through. Main spindle opens, sub spindle pulls, we clamp again. And then we go on to pinch turning again. So basically just to rough that out. Now the lower turret's coming in and it's drilling, which is fine, after it turns, which is fine. And now it's cutting the grooves, which is fine. But now we part off. And then we engrave, so that's not very good. You don't want to engrave while the part is parted off because this isn't very stable holding it down here, so that wouldn't be good. So we need to fix our sink. So let's go over to our sink and let's look. And yeah, everything passes, so we're not milling and turning at the same time, so all that passes, but we need to fix the program a little bit. So you can see tool number 13 down here is our part-off tool. And you can see on flow number 1, number 7 is our milling, so it's doing the engraving here. So we don't want to do the engraving, have it part off and then do the engraving. So I'm going to remove the sinks here. So just by clicking on that, remove them. And uh, I think, uh, let's see here, and let's remove these two. All right, now we brought back some errors on here. So basically we want to do the milling before we do any turning. So here's our tool number two, which takes our finish pass, then tool number four, which is our engraving tool. So let's click on four. And I want these to finish before the part off tool comes and parts off. So I'm gonna say at the end of this one, Let's sync up the flow two. Click on sync. You can see all checks pass now. So let's rewind. And play. Again, pinch turning. Okay. 
come in and do the hex. Finish pass on the hex. So the spindle comes in. Pulls. I'll play again. Pinch turning again. Lower turret waits till it finishes turning. There we do our grooves now. Now we're doing our engraving. Stop this a little bit and rotate it just a hair. Finish our engraving. So now we have our engraving done. And now we're doing the part off here. Sub spindle still attached. And there we go. At this point, you could have the overhead conveyor, of course, do the uh, take the part out of the sub spindle, and uh, you'd be done with the part. Of course, you can put that as a utility at the end, having the part sketcher come up, and you can tell it uh, the upper turret where to go before the part sketcher comes in. And same with the lower turret, you can just use the utility operations, which is right here. So here you have load spindle, unload spindle. You can do machine mode or move tool group. So in the move tool group, you can tell it which turret, which turret you want to go and where you want it to go. So you can get everything out of the way before the part sketcher comes in, especially if you have an overhead part sketcher comes in and grabs the part and takes it out or where they have a robot or whatever. But anyway, that's kind of how to sync, run the sync mode. If you have multiple flows, that's usually multiple turrets. So you'll have uh, double flows on there and there's how you sync. And if we were to run the code, you can take a look at the code here. So if we look, look at the code here, you can see here's our first sync code, M100. This is flow number one. And this is, of course, flow number two. We get done with our turning. Sync codes here, so this one's going to wait until this one hits 101. Then it's going to continue on. So here we have the next flow with flow number two, which is lower turret. Our next sync codes here, sub spindle in, grabs the part, sinks, pulls it out. Another sync code here. So now we're doing the some more pinch turning on here. Get done with that. Another M code here. Some finish, uh, actually some rough turning on here to finish off. And then we're doing a finish pass on here. And then we're going to do another sync code here. And here we have our milling, some more sync codes on here. And of course the last thing, let me go up a little bit on here. We have M111, so it's finishing off there. Scroll down to the bottom, M112, this is our part off here, so it's done milling here, so now we're going to do the part off here, and of course sub spindle return, unload the spindle. So that's kind of the sync codes here. So that's a little bit on how to uh, sync multiple flows. Anytime you have multiple turrets, you'll have multiple flows, whether it's a MTI, MTM type machine or a Swiss machine or anything with uh, multiple turrets. If you have three turrets, of course, then you'll have three flows. You can do the same thing with a sync control here. You'll have three flows here, and then you can sync between all three of them there. But uh, this is how you do it. It's not too tough. Just program how you would do it normally. And uh, then you can run the sync codes and have a good looking part. So thank you for watching.